Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today on our show. This is Eureka Carlson, and she is a spiritualist, and she also works with people, helping people through depression and suicide, and she's authored a book that she's going to tell us a little about today. She has a lot of really great information to share with us, so I'm going to give the table to Eureka and tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. I'm very excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you for having me, Stacey. I'm really looking forward to this also. I felt the energy uh, way before this call, so I'm really excited to be here. And thank you also, you who are here and listening. So what do I do? Who am I? I think that's like these, you know, two big existential questions. <laughs> mm. And hopefully I am uh, somebody that is evolving all the time. Uh, so at the moment... I am a mom with, of two teenagers. I am an international author. I've written five books in two and a half years. I am a yoga therapist, uh, a soul coach, and a spiritual healer. So this is what I aid people with. And it started actually in my own journey as I, the year 2008, I found myself <laughs> in a very, very dark space. I was depressed. Uh, I was suicidal. I had anxiety attacks. I had so many weird stress-related problems. And I I just didn't even realize that I was sick, that I was, yeah. you know, that I was suffering from mental illness. So everything that I do today is tools that I know works because obviously I'm here. Otherwise, I would have been dead a long time ago. So I, yeah. I only teach what I what I what I'm doing myself so it's been a long uh, both professional and personal journey to realize you know that why we are here because each and one of us we were talking a little bit before each and every one of us we have our different mission right mm -hmm. but most of us we're not even aware of our mission on or how to be aligned on who we are on the soul level yes and I also truly believe that like when I was depressed and suicidal, for me, obviously at the time, it was like a huge struggle and a huge challenge. Yeah. But I truly believe that challenges are disguised gift. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what we are experiencing in our lives, it's, it's the soul's way to tell us that we have the opportunity to stay put or we have, have the opportunity to grow, as you mentioned yourself, had done also. So I truly believe that we are free souls, you know, mm. yes. uh, with free choices. And then it's up to us how we use these choices. And most of us, unfortunately, we have a lot of stress and unresolved traumas and unexpressed emotions. I call them frozen emotions in our yeah. energetic system. So this means that we are governed from only 5% of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And we have you know, 95% of unconscious programs that governs right. us. So every time where we have the opportunity to transmute lower vibrational and unconsciousness into higher vibrational consciousness, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, uh, that's the way we change the world one soul yes. at a time. I think it's very important to be in, in tune with yourself. You know, I, th you know, so many times, especially when you brought back a good point is that when you go th sometimes through mental illness, you, you don't realize that you're actually going through it. Um, you know, I've had many friends too, you know, that were, you know, when it was brought, even brought up to them that, you know, they noticed the changes in their behavior, they, that they're, they weren't headed down a good road and they wanted them to go for help. They were either in denial or they were they were fearful of the change. They didn't want to face it because, you know, for many, change is, is very scary, you know. And um, did you find yourself when you were going through these 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 events in your life? Were you in a denial at, at one point or did you just not even I did. Know? I did. I like I was I was just in my headspace all the time and I yeah oh my gosh you know I I slept so poorly like my first book is actually about my journey back home to my heart it's called 2 47 a.m the journey home to my heart I just want to yeah please do so 2 47 a.m the journey home to my heart where I in a very raw and authentic 
way describe my journey for mental illness. And yes, I was in denial because uh, when I went to the doctor and I, you know, just was telling her a little bit on how I felt because I kept most of it to myself. I didn't yes. tell anybody actually that I was depressed and suicidal. I just told everybody that I was really tired and I was a mom to two really young kids also. So at the time when I was in denial, the, the doctor told me that, oh my God, you are really, you know, you're really low in energy and you are really, you know, it sounds really serious. You you are, you must, you must, you know, be home from work. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't feel sick like I don't have a cold or a fever or anything so I, I really didn't realize that I was in such a mess that I was you know on the verge of of killing myself yeah and and what what made you learn to accept that you actually had an, an, an illness that you actually were going through the depression and, and the suicidal thoughts you know what was that awakening like for you how did you really get to that point where you realized wait a second you know this is not right I, I i there's something going on or you know and then you learned about your depression and you learned about you know the suicidal thoughts you were going through and how to cope with them what was that turning point like that made you actually get on that pathway thank you a great question so uh for me uh it was a very long like downward spiral, as I told you already, that I yeah. didn't even realize. So um, every night for a decade or more, like I only slept 15 minutes per night, hence the wow. title of my book. I woke up 2.47 a.m. every morning after only 15 minutes of sleep. And every night I woke up oh from goodness. horrible nightmares where I was murdered, you know, there was so much blood, I was slayed. And I woke up with silent screams and this blood taste in my mouth. And I was really, really disorientated. I didn't know where I was. And these horrible, horrible dreams were still, you know, on my retina, in my yeah. the memory of my eye. So I was disorientated. And then when I looked up and I saw the alarm clock saying 2.47 a.m. And then I knew that I had only slept for 15 minutes per night because the last time I looked, it was 2 232 right right so I never told my husband at the time mm. that I was murdered next to him every night I never told anybody I just I'm a Swede we are um taught at a very young age to suppress not to be yes. too much uh we are also taught to uh, with, with a mindset like who do you think you are so yeah. this is a mindset that is sort of shaping us into become Swedes Right. right so uh obviously if i if i go back many 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 years i i'm an intuitive empath i'm a highly sensitive person but i didn't know this at the time you know right. so i my antenna was out all the time mm -hmm. i felt everybody's emotions all the time and it was overwhelming so i started to suppress a lot i started to you know put a lot, a lot, of, a lot of masks and playing a lot of like parts or having roles in my own ensemble, I would be the good girl, the funny girl, the pretty girl, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But inside of me, it was like chaos. And I started to hate myself. I started to feel so much self-contempt and self-disdain. So I couldn't even look into my own eyes. Wow. So one of my turning points was when I actually told my husband that uh, I'm so tired. I really, really need to go away because I was so sensitive of light and sound so I was like you know itching and, and twitching all the time like a drug addict yeah my mental abilities were all gone uh you know I, I couldn't remember anything I nearly put the house on fire so many times because I forgot the stove etc etc right I forgot my own, I forgot my own kid so the turning point was when I leave to the Swedish archipelago because I wanted some peace and quiet mm-hmm so I am there. It's a beautiful winter's day. The sun is shining and it's, you know, beautiful snowflakes out in the beautiful nature. And there I feel this enormous pressure like inside of me. It's like a volcano that is about to erupt in a million pieces and it scares the shit out of me. Yeah. So 
at the time I have a lot of eating disorders as well. So I walk out into the forest, you know, counting calories where I sort of feel something move within me. And I'm really, really scared. So I try to suppress it and I walk even faster. Yeah. Try to distract myself. Uh, and then it's like I hear this snap. And I get this immense pain in my chest. It's like a dagger, a knife straight into my heart. So I sort of gasp for air and I press my hands to hold on to my heart because it feels it's going to be shattered into a million pieces. Yeah. And I'm falling into the snow and I can feel this thing, whatever it is, rising. And then I hear like another snap. And it's like from a long distance, I hear this horrible, this animal in you know like a primal scream or an animal that's about to die yeah and i'm terrified like not only am i gonna die here from this heart attack that i'm having in the snow nobody knows where i am i didn't get to say goodbye to my kids so i'm gonna die alone uh in the woods with this chest pain that i'm having but i'm also gonna be eaten by some kind of you know horrible beast right and so all these amazing and horrifying sounds surrounding me in the in the forest and like echoing until I realized that these sounds are my own like coming from a space within me that I didn't even know existed and then at the same time it's like I'm starting to cry so much it's like you know bursting down so I'm lying there in fetus position clutching to my heart with all these howling and grunting and horrifying noises and I'm crying and then when I come back many hours later, when I come back to my senses, everything is like pitch black. So I know that I've been lying there for many hours. So it's pitch black, but it's like all my senses are in heightened. So I can hear the snowflakes falling. I can see the different shapes and forms in the pitch dark black. Yeah. And for the first time ever, I can only describe it as like a stillness in expansion. There was no thoughts. There were no monkey mind. There were no worries, no fears, nothing. It was just like pure peace, this stillness in expansion. So that was a big turning point for me, realizing that if I continue to live the way that I do and I hate myself and I have all these things within me that I'm going to kill myself, that I'm, I'm going to be dead. And yeah. I'm of no use to my small kids if I'm dead, right? Right. So I realized that otherwise I'm going to continue to do what I do or I need to do something differently. And I had no clue right. what to do or how to do it. Like I literally didn't have a clue. But eventually I got little pieces of the puzzle, you know, like so I followed the thread mm -hmm. and – here I am. That's amazing. That is truly amazing. I think sometimes you have to hit rock bottom in order to actually to to work your way back up. You get to a point in your life where you you know that this is the end. It's either you make a choice, either you you work on yourself and you get better and you just you you make the initiative, whatever changes you have to do, whoever you have to talk to, you do it. And or else, you know, it's it's the other path. And if if you don't want, if you if you you know, and you have to realize that we all are valuable. We all have something beautiful to give this this world. And I think sometimes that's that's the problem is that so many people think they're unworthy. So many people don't feel don't realize how much true potential, how special they are how they can give back to the world so much because they don't feel good about themselves. And it, it's, it's, it's opening that person's eyes and, and making them see that, you know, there's more to life than the life they're living at this moment and that it can, they can change themselves. Change is possible. And we, For sure. yeah, For sure. And I, I also believe that I can only speak for myself, but for many of my clients is that, I personally, I had many warning signs before, like yeah. 
like like now afterwards i could see the warning signs i could yeah. hear them i could feel them but i just ignore them because yeah. i wasn't taught to listen to my body i wasn't taught to experience you know if i got sick i just took some pills and then i was off to work i think many right. people does that because we are so programmed also to be human doers instead of being human beings right yeah and we always have to perform to to do to do to do to take on another project we need to develop we need to have higher education we need to move forward etc etc we need to be the best versions of ourselves but in our western world i'm, I'm a yoga therapist so in mm. our western world these energies aren't anchored within the body it's like right. only many people are living in the head space in the mental space where we are problem solvers we think ahead and we can even hear it in the language we are moving in the ascending yeah. the masculine flow but most of us when we feel pain then we distract or numb ourselves or we are stressed, you know, living our lives in matrix. So we distract and arm ourselves. And there's millions of ways to distract yourself because everything we can use, we can also abuse, right? Yes. So most of us, even though that we want to have different lifestyles or that we we are not happy, most of us, we are not connected and, and listening to our inner wisdom in, you know, how to make this change. So. Right my metaphor is always like i have this beautiful garden this beautiful garden but it's full of weed right so there's no space there's no space for growth so first mm -hmm. i need to pull these weeds with the roots up and then i can create space in my garden and then i have the space to plant the seeds that i want to have right but i need to do the inner work first i need to pull out all these unconscious programs these stored emotions fears shame hatred frustration grief etc all these that we all have as human beings which is part of our you know soul's journey to be aligned with who we are and as we talked about also to to use our challenges as disguised gifts but yeah. we need to pull out these roots of the weeds first because right. there's and as much as i want to expand I need to move inwards. Yeah. I can't like this is also how energy works. I can't expand and be successful and happy out here if it's not anchored within me. Yeah. It is like this arrow, you know. Yeah. Like if, if I want to move forward, I need to pull the string back first so then it can fly away. It's the same with growth and with changes. We need to change from within first and yes. then we can do the changes outside of us. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I think that's, you know, what people's biggest problem is, is that they don't realize that they have to go work within themselves in order to, to be able to become that better person. And it's, it's really digging deep inside yourself where your mind, body and spirit connect as one, because when you're not connected, you really can't function properly. And that's, that's where the problem begins. But if you, you know, when everything is all aligned and everything is working in sync, you know, you start to see life in a whole different way and, you know, and you start to really become a better person overall. You'll, you know, you'll start to see life differently. You'll start to look at people differently. Your self-esteem will become, you know, um, higher. You'll begin to get great, gain more resilience, you know, and, and positivity, and you'll start to feel more positive. And I think positivity and gratitude is so important. And that's something we lack, you know, and, and when people are struggling, once you get over that hump and you're able to be able to start to start to, to feel a little bit better, look around you and, 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 you know, start to have gratitude. I think, you know, I think that's a big thing. I think we lack gratitude in our society, you know, and we mentioned yes. a really good point is that, you know, in our society, we, our generation was taught to keep everything inside. And that's the biggest problem. And like you said, or take a pill, you know, that's the, you know, and that's still being pushed today, but now people are realizing that there are other holistic ways and other alternative methods in order to heal. For sure. And also from the yogic perspective, like I've studied yoga and other holistic disciplines for more than 28 years, 
and yoga was also part of my healing journey yes. not yoga as we have seen in the western part of the world like with a lot of different and advanced asanas or positions but true yoga yoga means connection yes. right mm -hmm. to connect with the whole spectra of you that is you all all the shadows the the wounds etc etc and all your lights because these polarities exist here in the 3d where we have our you know physical bodies we live in in, in the matrix in 3d yeah so here we have and this it is because for us as souls to experience you know yeah. the diversity of life so that's why these polarities exist so we have love and we have fear however most of us we are programmed with fear-based programs and programs of lack and scarcity so just like you're saying we lack gratitude we lack confidence we lack trust we lack this and that because we're not taught so we're not experienced so so we believe we are in the illusion that life is a struggle we need to work hard if it's a struggle etc but the change that i want to see out there in the collective consciousness it all starts within me and yeah. this is what i'm talking about this metaphor with a with a garden mm -hmm. and and for us in the western world from the yogic perspective we we are not rooted we are not anchored in our bodies we are living up in the headspace meaning that we are you know in a mental mental kind of energy and also in the what i call uh, immature or unconscious masculine energy yeah. also this doing 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 and when this happens when we're too much up in our headspace the energy is depleted from lower chakras chakras is like energy centers and we have yes. more than 80,000 in our bodies but the yeah. yogic thera therapies are working with the seven biggest mm -hmm. right so yes this means that our societies we are drained we are depleted from from the root chakra and when we are depleted from our root chakra we are not at home we are not you know at ease in our bodies because yes. it's so painful to be a human being we have a lot of shit that is going on like karma karmic mm -hmm. shit shit from this lifetime and past lifetimes and from your ancestors yes there's a lot of a lot of lower vibrational fears and frequencies like fear and lack of scarcity etc so it, it is an intense experience to be in the human body so that's why we want to move upwards in the ascending flow and this means that we are disconnected. We are disconnected in body, mind, and soul because we are not grounded. We're not anchored. And this is also a reflection on how we treat ourselves, mm -hmm. others, and the planet that we live upon because yes. we are abusing Gaia, Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. And this is only because there's this huge gap, this huge disconnection in ourselves because most of us, we don't want to do the inner work. We want to have quick fixes yes. or free lunches or we take a pill to numb ourselves or right. we we take that to distract ourselves. And even being like a workaholic, which is premiered in our countries, right? To be a yes. workaholic, to be good at your work, that is a grave imbalance in the root chakra. That is a grave imbalance, so to speak, that you think that you have to do to be loved instead of right. just be to be loved yes so there's these great uh, imbalances in the root chakra so that's why in my line of work i also working with the descending flow with the feminine flow coming back you know moving down the energy from the headspace into the body so you can live from an open heart after you clear out all that shit <laughs> yes <laughs> now for, for people who want to learn how to do this like what are some steps, you know, to help people? Because I'm sure there's so many people out there, you know, I've been there, you've been there and I'm, you know, I'm sure there's thousands of other people there and, you know, but they want to get to that point where they want to be able to balance their chakras. They want to be able to see more clearly. They want to see the light. They want to get out of the gray box. They want to see life in a more brighter zone. What's your suggestions on how people can start getting started and get themselves out of that dark zone and get themselves to start to be connected with their inner self and start to align and start to look at life in a, in a brighter, more positive way. 
again, a great question, Stacey. So um, my own personal and professional experience is actually the more darkness that I transmute, the more access I have to my light. Mm -hmm. The more lower vibrational programs of fears, lack and scarcity that I transmute, the more access I have to high states of consciousness. And this is also what I then emit into the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. So most of us, we are afraid of the dark, right? right. Mm -hmm. Whether we call the dark, whether we label it like dark, darkness, whether we name it wound, trauma, etc. But to do like, you know, shadow work uh, is a necessary part yeah. to do this change, to do... And the more you you dare, because it takes a lot of courage, courage yeah. and persistence to to use your inner shit. This is a great. Yeah. You can use your inner shit as manure. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you yeah. can use it as a manure for a beautiful flower to expand. Uh, so you use your darkness. You use your wounds. You and here it sounds so it sounds so simple, but it not might be so easy. But it's very right. simple. Mm -hmm. so it comes down to this basically we human beings we want to be loved right yes we want to be included and we mm -hmm. want to be acknowledged right yes. mm -hmm. but then we put a lot of effort out into the collective consciousness and the outdoor realities for finding love finding yes. the true love or to find acknowledgement or inclusion like oh see me here you know acknowledge me i'm good i'm good like this but so we are looking for the wrong things at the wrong places. Yeah. Again, we need to move inwards and to to move through these wounds, these shadows, yes. these layers of shit. So mm -hmm. if you find yourself in a dark space or if you find yourself that you are depressed, it it is a really good start because depressed can mean a deep rest, mm -hmm. deep rest for body, mind and soul. So that means that you have to, one way or another, feel, see, observe, love, acknowledge, and include these intense feelings. And when you do that, that's the healing work. Yes. That's the healing progress. So to even, you know, observe and acknowledge your fears, your the, the qualities of yourself that you're not so proud of, okay, so I can be very frustrated. I, I'm, I have no patience, etc. But to, to make sure that even these aspects of yourself are in loved, included, and acknowledged. Right. And for me personally, I have also experienced many past lifetimes, like reincarnations in my own healing work. So I mm -hmm. have sort of integrated different parts of myself like uh, i remember that i'm a mermaid from one lifetime mm -hmm. uh, i've integrated this part in my healing journey because that is also part of who i am and you know where i have access to my inner embodied wisdom yeah. and i have a white wolf and i have uh, <laughs> a character um that is called the dark fuck uh, but um so so there's so many aspects and we are not only you know on a soul level we are just light light yes. in different frequencies mm -hmm. but here in the 3d in the matrix it's so dense the frequency is so low so we have each and one of us we have it within us so a good way to start is to start to acknowledge it because we can never change what we're not even aware of right so yes. we have to become aware that is a really good step and we always 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 have to work with the body through the body because yeah. everything is stored in the body. So we need to use the body. It's not like I can sit here and just with my vision board and put it in a bubble and blow it away. No, yes. because it doesn't involve the body. It needs the bodily involvement for it to be embodied. And right. where we express the wisdom. Do you have any like suggestions for people who really want to get in contact with their inner self, their spiritual self, and find out more about their you know where they came from and and they find out the roots about so they can understand themselves in a better way 
how can you get in contact with your spiritual self? How can you connect? Is there a, a is there any suggestions for people who really want to connect or even enhance their spiritual level where they just, you know, they want they want to be able to be able to be at a higher frequency level where they're more intuitive, where they're more where they're more open to the universe and they connect with the universe and maybe even be able to, you know, connect further and deeper into their heart to, to figure out what's causing their inner pain, you know, because like even with the, the chakras, we have the root, we have the sacral, you know, plexus that we, and you go further and further, but how do we connect? How do we get that deeper connection? I love your questions. <laughs> they're so, they're so, uh, so simple, but again, that's so easy. Yeah. So for me, there are multiple ways, right? Uh, so I'm a yoga therapist and this is what I do with people that comes to me. So then I work with the body and with the breath. Right. Because the breath, the word breath in Swedish is called am the tag, And that literally means to connect with the spirit. Okay. So most people, when we are stressed, when we are not in our bodies, when we are working a lot, we have a lot of on our plates, etc., etc. et, cetera, yes. et cetera, uh, we are stressed. And this restricts our breathing patterns, right? And we're not yes. even aware of it, but right. it limits our breathing. And if our breaths are limited, it means less oxygen in and less toxics out, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. A restricted breathing always gives a restricted kind of life. Yeah. one way or the other and it can come to you know where you're not at ease you feel dis-ease so yes. limiting breathing pattern can cause a lot of diseases so i work with a with the the body again to to heal what's stored in the body you need to use the body right yes. so mm -hmm. that is one goal and on holistic level and then I can also work with a karma clearing. I can work from the soul level to clear out what's stored in the body. So right. I do a karma clearing and I get all this information like, okay, Stacy, 20 lifetimes ago, you did some really, really bad choices mm -hmm. because we have all killed somebody and we have all been killed. Mm -hmm. And this is really big for people to take in that we have all been killers and soldiers and we have all been perpetrators and or victims mm -hmm. and these energies lingers within us in our cells in our right. dna in our inner water i have a book called holy fuck and sacred water the secret connections to everything where we describe the importance of purifying our yeah. own inner water and so purifying our own inner water from these traumas, wounds, et cetera, et cetera, either by like yoga therapy to yeah. move deep within you and also with a, with a karma clearing to read to soul readings where we started to make these negative choices. Like right. 20 lifetimes ago, you, Stacey, or me, Ulrika, started to make negative choices where we killed people. And that has ripple effects mm -hmm. that echoes through time and space. So just want to... This uh, latest book, um, The Sacred Soul, A Divine Evolution Through Time and Space, here I describe each and one of us how we are contributing to the mess that yes. we see in the world today. It's our inner mess that is reflected out there. Yes. So when, once we clear it out, we bring that to the table in the highest states of frequency. So either you can work you know, from the soul into the body through yes. the body or you can work from the body but always has to need to be holistic approach mm -hmm. i can't with my mind only say like okay so uh, put it in a bubble and blow it away or this is what i call like a spiritual bypass yeah and so many people so many yogic so many people in alternative medicine are doing spiritual bypass like think positive or you know, and it doesn't work if you don't have access to the grounded feeling within you. It doesn't matter how much positivity you you think or you throw around yourself. It needs to be anchored. Yes. So again, we need to do the work. And even though that nobody can like heal you, but there are right. many of us that can provide tools for self healing. And you know, you have been on the path. I have been on the path. So we have been there before you and we can walk next to you hold your hand 
Right. But like healing and happiness is always an inside job, right? Right. But then we can have guides and we can have help during different paths of our life journeys. So, and I think that's where you and I can come in and really make people. Yeah. As we are also, you know, walk the talk, we are doing what we have experienced ourselves and we know that it's working. Otherwise we wouldn't be here, right? Right. It's very true. And where can people find your book? So uh, actually they are on Amazon, but oh, I wouldn't excellent. recommend Yeah, no, no, because Amazon sell books and they keep the money. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know how many books I've sold. I, I don't get anything from there. I just get photos from people that are happy that I've read my books. So you actually find the books uh, here uh, on my website, which is www.com ulliskarlsson.com that is u l l i s k a r l s o n.com so there you find them and i will send them to you excellent now if you had to give some some the listeners some takeaways out of the conversation we had today what are some things that you want them to to remember that are very important that could actually help them on their journey to becoming a better more clear-minded person and with a with a better life and and have a, a new journey they could look forward to thank you um so there's my, many things i want to say to you mm -hmm. so first uh you are a free soul and you have a free choice mm -hmm. right yes and yeah. sometimes it might seem easier to be stuck in our comfort zone for the moment but we all know that there's no growth in the comfort zone that's right. why it's called the zone yes so the soul's evolution is always happening outside the comfort zone so it's okay to be scared just do it anyway it's okay to feel uncomfortable so-called what we have called or labeled uncomfortable emotions yeah. because it's a good way to start and it's a good way to start to be depressed right if you can if you can turn the intention of the word that you are in a deep rest right and, and always, always, always start with your, you know, awareness of your breathing patterns. There's mm -hmm. so much information for each and one of us to gain yes. there. So a lot of my, uh, when I do yoga classes, programs or courses, we, we do a lot of breathing. And it's not only to calm down the nervous system, because we can calm down the nervous system quite easily. It is yeah. to regulate because our nervous systems are so much on all the time, on fire and, you know, the sympathetic nervous system that we need to do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to regulate our nervous system, not only calm it down, but to regulate it. So it will yes. be regulated and we have access to the parasympathetic nervous system much more. So I hope there were some things for you to, to ponder upon or reflect upon your breathing yes are you in a dark space and first uh, and also we also have to become aware to become aware of our own bullshit <laughs> telling ourselves and that we are learned from others so yes it takes a lot of courage to say to see through all of this yes it does but once you do it's it's a whole new life it's like the the hump is hard getting over the hump but once you get over that hump it's a it's a just a beautiful twank tank uh tranquil feeling it's just you it know is. you know once you are able to get over it and it's not easy and it could be very painful it usually is but once you get over it it's just exactly. life is has changed for you and you just see everything in a whole new whole new way it's it's an amazing feeling and like you exactly. said exactly it takes exactly. time it takes it time. takes time and you need to be courage and the word courage i love this because the word courage comes from the word the french word la coeur which means the heart ah. so if you are afraid you do it anyway that's courage because right. we wouldn't be afraid if you know uh, we we would do it if we right. weren't afraid so do be afraid and do it anyway but to to become aware is like the really first and, and so the, the metaphor you just did with the hump, so we can choose to stay on the comfort zone, you know, on one side of the hump, or we can, we can allow our soul to guide us 
to nudge us because it does all the time. We are yes. filled with information, but we can choose if we want to listen and we have the free choice as free soul to move over that hump. And as you say, life is life is not free from like conflicts or strong or intense emotions. You just know how to navigate them. Exactly. And so I have I have like a year long program that I also call Master Yourself because there's so many energies. We are energetic beings. Yes. So many layers of us, different energies, different polarities, and to have all the tools to be your own master in your own life. Yes. Then you are, uh, you know, on the beautiful side of the other side of the hump. Yes, 100%. Now, you're a published author, but you have other services. Like, what other services do you offer? So I have a one year long programs, as I just mentioned, Master Yourself. I mm -hmm. have these beautiful life, life transformational readings, karma clearings in the Akashic record. I do um, healing private and in classes. So Tantra, yoga, yoga therapy. So it's like a smorgasbord. So mm -hmm. depending on who's sitting in front of me uh, right. and, and, you know, does it, this person wants to start with a karma clearing and then, you know, to clear out the inner shit or do we start with the body and to be aligned with the soul. Right. So I have um, on my website, Ulis Carlson, U-L-I-S-K-A-R-L-S-O-N.com. I have uh, many different sessions there. Uh, also for couples, a session that I call Flow and Spark to, to find a new connectedness and intimacy between oneself and each other excellent so everything everything just aims for us to be more aligned yes with an open heart and there with an increased consciousness i love it oh this is beautiful this is beautiful i thank you so much for being on the show and i hope to have you back and this has been amazing you have brought so much knowledge to the table and really, you know, helped opening people's eyes and even my eyes to, to different ways of, of looking at things and different ways of approaching things to improve your overall life and, you know, ways to get out of, you know, very dark zones, you know, some people, you know, uh, they just don't know how to get out of it. And some people are just, they, they just don't feel worthy enough, or some people just get to the point where they just can't deal with it anymore. But Using a lot of the techniques and the strategies you mentioned today, you know, there is hope. There is a way. There is there is a way to improve your life. You know, it's it's our choice. And, you know, by by working and doing constructive strategies and tools and implementing them into your life, you know, wonderful things could happen. And, you know, like we mentioned, connecting the mind, the body, and the spirit together does wonders. It really makes you look at life in a whole different way. So I thank you so much for coming on the show and really bringing light to the table because sometimes people see things in the gray box and they don't really sometimes see things on the outside of how things can change, but using different techniques that could be actually more rewarding and the outcome could be actually even stronger. And I'm happy. So thank you, Stacey, for having me. I love to talk to you. You had great questions and also Thank you, you who are listening. And if there's like one word, you know, that I'm saying or one sentence, then I have, you know, paid it forward. It's like a ripple effect because when I was depressed and suicidal, I heard something on Oprah Winfrey show. And that day I didn't commit suicide. So if there's like one thing that I'm saying, then it's, you know, karma and paying it forward. So I'm happy. So yeah, I would love to be back. And Thank you so much for having me, Stacey. Oh, thank you for coming on the show. You have a great day. You too.